Welcome to day three of our coastal fishing and camping four-wheeling adventure. This morning, I'm going to head out to that reef. I've always wanted to get on top of that reef and have a bit of a squiz, a bit of a look. So that's what I'm gonna do. Followed by going for a bit of a snorkel with whoever's keen. failed to bring some rope with me for the kayak so I can't really tie it off so this walk is going to be a bit of a short distance. I had to get off the rock because the swell picked up a bit. Ooh, look at that. Big waves coming through now. So I was a bit worried about losing the kayak because then I'd have to run out and chase it. Or swim. Don't really want to swim around all this reef here. This stuff's nasty and sharp. So I'm in Don's vehicle, heading out for a bit of a snorkel. How far are we going to go? Uh, See what it feel like, eh? Yeah. <laughs> we can probably do a kilometre along that reef. See how we go? Looks good though. Mm, I reckon I'll be good for half a K. Oh, we'll see. See what the current's like. My snorkeling gear consists of my bodyboarding gear. I don't have proper flippers for snorkeling. So these will do. And I'm using this type of mask now. More so to hold the GoPro really. <laughs> Few people find them funny. A lot of people don't like them. But works for me. Are we going to try and catch Don? Uh, I don't know. We'll see whatever's out there. Um, Burn well. <laughs> uh, no, we'll see. Uh, there could be quite a few. Uh, I don't know. 
it's open to anyone's guests, I guess. Over here in this bay, perfect conditions for it, so. There's no enough sharks in here too. So we'll see how we go. Still quite a few fish, don't we? Yeah, saw heaps. It was good. This was a little bit murky, but um, it wasn't too bad. As you can see how the wind is picking up now. It's very yeah, wind has picked up big time. A lot quicker than it was yesterday. Even out there, see all the water was. I was starting to get thrown around too, by the waves. Yeah. You, you're not expecting it because you're busy looking at a fish and then. Yeah, and then next minute. <laughs> no, but it was good. It's definitely better to go in the mornings for sure. Yeah. So we'll see how we go tomorrow. Awesome. Yeah, hopefully the other spot should be good. We'll see. But yeah, that wind's really picked up now, so we'll head back to camp and have some breakfast and pack up. Hopefully the others have cooked breakfast. Yeah, hopefully. The roof rack wasn't big enough. Yeah, they ran, well, they ran mustard, away. We found some mustard. Yeah, we caught some mustard. Caught some mustard. Well, Don did. Yes, yeah, well, found some mustard. If your car didn't start down the other end, because it would have been a long walk. Yeah, I, I was considering that, but get that one. But we decided to cook our bacon egg burgers. Oh, we yeah. got the buns from the bakery. Oh, mate! Not complaining whatsoever. I knew you wouldn't when you come back. I'll say to Don, we're a little bit early because it's not finished yet. Yeah, well, he was, he was uh, already. Uh, you're to, a bit late. You might have to this help. This is round two. We <laughs> 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 finished off the crayfish this morning. Yeah. Uh, We've done here, mate. That's that was uh, Anthony's idea. Tongs. That's elaborate. Yeah, the uh, we wasn't really getting the fun enough. So elaborate. We just thought. Some sort of wind break. It was weird. The wind's just. Think that needs here. a bit of modifying. You're an ideas man. I am an ideas man, especially when it comes to food. <laughs> 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 Haven't had a coffee yet. Bacon. Bacon's the next best thing. left camp from last night a um, bit of rains come in winds in pretty strong uh, we're gonna head sort of towards uh, Port Gregory I think it is duck out gonna take a visit to Hutt River Providence have a look around there make a bit of a plan and then uh, I think we're heading south of Port Gregory but all depends on the weather so as you can see 
Um, bit overcast, not the greatest. Fair bit of sand blowing around on camp last night. So we'll see what the day brings us. It's time to air up before we head to our next destination, which happens to be some private land with a private beach. I kid you not, a private beach. I can't disclose the whereabouts of it because the owner obviously doesn't want every man and their dog to come down there. On the way there, we're going to check out something a little bit odd, the Principality of Hutt River, a country within Australia, an enclave. More on that a bit later. Perfect. 40. Oh. Quite a few bullets around here, so I've got to watch myself. Um, yeah, lost the cap on my uh, washer bottle. I think it would have been yesterday in the dunes. <coughs> it was pretty loose anyway to start with, but luckily we checked it this morning. Managed to make a plan with some plastic from the, the mineral water bottles. Uh, it stretches quite nicely, and of course a universal cable tie that fixes anything seems to have worked. Principality of Hutt River, formerly known as Hutt River Province. Uh, Prince Leonard died this morning. This morning. Um, which, yeah, how's that? We rock up the day that the prince actually died. So he was, he ruled this place for 45 years. Uh, he handed it over to Graham, uh, Prince Graham, which uh, was Le one of Leonard's sons and he's been the ruler of Hutt River since 2017. So because he died this morning, uh, Graham has Prince Graham has informed us that he needs to shut down all the government offices and all the buildings. So we have a really brief stay here just to have a look around and then we'll get on our way afterwards. But for now, let's check this place out. The Principality of Hutt River has its own currency, although it is not recognised by any other country or Australia. It also has its own 
Postal Service, the Royal Mail of Royal Hutt River. The Principality of Hutt River, formerly known as Hutt River Province, is a micronation in Australia. It claims to be an independent sovereign state and was founded on the 21st of April 1970. However, the Australian government does not recognise it as a different country, nor do any other countries in the world. It's a very long complex story how all this became to be. You can search it yourself on the internet, all the details are there. In the short, Leonard Cassidy had a dispute against the West Australian government over some wheat production quotas, at which point he declared an independent province in 1970. That's how Hutt River became to so be. They're in a souvenir shop. We're just giving him some space, left the cash on the counter, got a souvenir. Although the Principality of Hutt River is not recognised by any government, including Australia, it still gets a lot of traffic there. 40,000 tourists come every single year to check this place out. And it's out of the way, so people actually want to go and see it. Like us, we wanted to see what this was all about. So I'm now inside the chapel and I've been informed that the ladies always sit on the right in Hutt River Province because they are always right. And the prince will sit on the left. As far as we know, no other country recognises Hutt River Province. The Australian government, I believe, is actually suing them at the moment. That is correct, Mr Ronnie Dale from the past. The Principality of Hutt River is being sued by the Australian government for tax evasion for $2.7 million. Due to the death of the Prince and the former ruler of the Principality of Hutt River, we must cut our visit short and allow Prince Graham some space so he can shut the whole place down for the next few days. Our next point of interest is that private property with the private beach. Goodbye to Hutt River and rest in peace Prince Leonard. We've been driving for a while, we've now arrived at a private property. So this is a acquaintance of ours and uh, he's allowed us to stay at his shed. So this is where we'll be staying tonight. We'll be out of the wind, finally. I've just unhitched the trailer, we've just had a 5pm 5, 5 lunch. <laughs> and Funny uh, that, ready for a one yeah. o'clock dinner. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. No, ready for an eight o'clock dinner. Eight o'clock dinner. We're going to take the, uh, the cruisers and the patrol down onto the beach, drop some cray pots in, which are just behind us, and uh, then come up the steep side. Uh, the, actually, he, um, he told us that um, going down to the easy part, coming up, might be a bit challenging. Yeah. So, come up. Yeah, we'll come up. But he said, uh, he, he warned us about some boulders may have come off the cliffs because he's up through a valley. So we'll just drive it and see what happens. Send me up first. Yeah, send me up first. I don't, have, I don't have the trailer behind me. I'm going to leave that here because uh, the beach is pretty narrow. It's four, was it four metres? Yeah, four metres, five metres from high tide. Yeah. Roughly. But the, the main purpose of going down there is to drop the cray pot in and then hopefully tomorrow we've got some more crays. Now, why do I get the feeling we're going to end up at camp in the dark again?
We spotted some reef on the top of the tracks which looks like it has some holes in it. So this may be a good spot to drop some cray pots in. Which is exactly what we're going to try and do. I sat in the car for a while actually and I watched the water, tried to pick where the holes were and we had a bit of a plan where we wanted to put them. From our angle, didn't look very safe, uh, <laughs> but yeah, obviously it was all right. Uh, they they uh, stopped for about 15 minutes at one stage, and there was a lot of everyone looking at each other, like, should we be doing this or should we not be doing this? Great pots out. We're like, game plan. We're gonna get these in the water. I looked at it, and I'm thinking we're pretty crazy. Looked at Ronnie, he's still pretty keen, so I'm like, oh, we'll do it. And I actually said to Ronnie, you jump in and see how deep it is in the hole. And uh, we, we managed to get one cray pot in. At some stages, it, it was a little bit surgy, but it was probably only oh, knee deep and the little waves would roll in. It was probably a little bit dangerous. They've got these pots and they've got them off the thing and they were like, all right, you just, you and Ant just grab them and just bring them down to the rocks. So I'm looking out there and I'm just like, oh, dude, how, where are you going to put these things? Because there's, you're going to go for ages before there's a drop off. So um, anyway, they, we passed them the cray pots. I, I, I wouldn't have got in there, to be honest. I've, I've grown up by the sea. I've, I've got into a lot of precarious situations, but I'll, not something for me. Anyway, respect and hats off to these guys. Took the cray pots out, negotiated the reef somehow. Uh, good to have experience in that field, by the way. If, you, if you've never done it and you don't know what you're doing, don't even get there. But yeah, they dropped, the, they dropped it into a hole. Much to my astonishment, and ants, by the way. Um, yeah, it was a pretty good effort. In the end, I could see um, it was a good outcome. Well, that was fun. Probably not the best time of day to be doing it, but no. Low tide would have been a lot easier. Probably a bit crazy to do that. Cray pots in. One's in a really good spot, one's in a low okay spot. Yeah, hopefully the one, the first one we put in is blue. The second one we've edged it right in. Yeah. I reckon that's promising. I didn't think I was going to get wet head to toe, but there you go. That's until I told you to jump in the hole and see how deep it is. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. See what happens tomorrow morning, low tide. That's probably, the, li that's probably the limit of swell I'll get in by yeah. And yeah. we are close, you have two, two spotters. They're right here, you're not going to get sucked out. We, we watched the water for like half an hour though to try yeah. and find the holes and where it was safe and where it was breaking. So. And yeah, of course, we could have got refresh. That's, that's why I'm wearing long pants. That's why I'm wearing shorts. And a singlet. <laughs> Yeah, and they got it all done, came out a bit wet, had a bit of a bath while they were in there. Um, yeah, but no, no scratches or bruises, so it was a successful uh, pot drop in the end. That's the best sunset yet, I reckon. I'll stay here till it goes down.
and getting back up to camp was never going to be easy or simple. I get the all clear, everyone's on the radio. Yeah, go mate, send it. Sweet. <laughs> Went up, got three quarters of the way up and then got bogged, like really bogged. Tried to drop the gears a little bit, put the old auto thing in, no ways, got bogged completely. 